It was January 9th, 2022. Suddenly, North Korea's internet vanishes. Government websites go offline without warning. Was it a retaliation for Kim's latest missile tests? Experts suspect a massive cyber attack, maybe by a rival government. But the truth is, a single hacker in pajamas with a grudge. Why did he do it? And how far was he willing to go to make North Korea pay? One year earlier, an American cybersecurity researcher sits at his desk, scrolling through code. He's known only by his handle P4X. Late one night in January 2021, P4X receives a message from another researcher offering a new hacking tool. Curious, he opens the file in a secure virtual machine. Nothing obvious happens, but within a day, Google publishes a bombshell blog post. North Korean hackers are targeting Western security researchers with booby-trapped files. P4X checks the tool he was sent, and his stomach drops. The file hid a back door, a secret doorway for intruders. North Korean spies had tried to hack him. P4X is stunned. Why would a nation state go after him personally? He had narrowly avoided disaster by isolating the malware, but the attempt left him shaken. He soon learns he wasn't the only target. It was part of a broad campaign by North Korean operatives to steal hacking tools and vulnerability research from experts like him. In other words, Pyongyang's hackers were hunting the hunters. He expects the US government to swoop in. After all, being attacked by foreign cyber spies feels like an act of war on a private citizen. An FBI agent does reach out to P4X, but only to take his statement. There's no follow-up, no help securing his systems, no retaliation against the perpetrators. Weeks pass, then months. Silence. It's as if nobody's coming. P4X feels abandoned. There's really nobody on our side, he concludes bitterly. He's a hacker exposed to a nation's spies, and no one will protect him. That's when a seed of resentment takes root. North Korea struck at him in secret and got away with it. P4X isn't the forgiving type. As the months go by, that seed grows into a plan. If the authorities won't avenge this breach, maybe he will. The idea seems almost crazy. A one-man counterattack against the most isolated regime on Earth. But the more P4X thinks about it, the more it feels not just possible, but necessary. By the end of 2021, his mind is made up. He'll strike North Korea himself. But can one man really take down a country's internet without getting caught? P4X begins quietly gathering intelligence. For once, he's the hunter, his target, North Korea's sliver of the internet. Few outsiders truly know what North Korea's online infrastructure looks like. What P4X discovers amazes him. The country's internet presence is tiny and fragile. Only a few networks and dozens of websites serve the entire nation. It's a digital house of cards propped up by aging software and sloppy security. To a seasoned hacker, it's full of unlocked doors. Night after night, P4X scours North Korea's systems from afar. He probes servers, tests doors and windows in the code. Before long, he finds what he needs. Vulnerabilities, and plenty of them. In fact, they're not even new vulnerabilities. They are known flaws that North Korean CIS admins never bothered to patch. Old versions of Apache and other software are rife with holes. An outdated Nginx web server bug that collapses the system if you simply send it a weird header. To P4X, it's like North Korea left its front gates wide open. It's pretty interesting how easy it was to actually have some effect in there, he notes. The more he maps out their network, the more confidence he gains. He can do this. He writes custom scripts to automate the attacks. If one man is going to strike an entire country, automation is key. His code will scan North Korean servers, find which ones are online, then hit them with exploits to overload or crash them. It's a denial of service attack with surgical precision, like a digital guerrilla war. Every line of code is designed for one purpose, to knock North Korea off the global internet. As he prepares, P4X operates in secrecy. He knows going vigilante is risky. If caught, he could face serious legal trouble under hacking laws. And if North Korea figures out who's behind the intrusions, he could become a target for reprisal. So P4X takes precautions. He adopts a pseudonym to hide behind. He chooses P4X, pronounced P-A-X, a cheeky nod to enforcing peace through punishment. Under this alias, he can strike from the shadows. No real name, no face, just a faceless hacker delivering payback. By early 2022, the plan will be ready. P4X sits at his computer, likely wearing that same uniform of t-shirt, pajama pants, and slippers. This ordinarily looking guy has a not so ordinary mission, the country's internet. He double checks his tools. The code is loaded on his laptop and some rented cloud servers. The targets are lined up. His heart pounds with adrenaline and defiance. After a deep breath, he launches the attack. With a few keystrokes, the packets start flying. The code is running. 
The targets are set, but will it actually work or blow up in his face in a quiet Miami home? P4X's monitors flicker as streams of data flood out toward North Korea. At first, it feels anticlimactic, just code running, no explosions, no immediate visual proof of impact. P4X cues up an alien movie on the TV to pass the time, munching on spicy corn chips, trying to act normal. But every few minutes, he pauses the movie and shuffles to his home office to check the attack's progress. Each time, the news gets better. One by one, North Korean servers stop responding. P4X pings the country's handful of websites. Air Koro's booking site is down. NARA, the regime's official web portal down. The state news site is down. He refreshes again. Nothing. One after another, the websites time out. Across the world, anyone trying to access North Korea online is seeing error messages. Inside the secretive nation, officials suddenly find their external emails and web access cut off. North Korea has been knocked offline. Still, P4X isn't celebrating yet. Is this real? Could one person truly have done this? He checks an independent monitoring service, Pingdom, which tracks website uptime. The charts for North Korea's web domains show a sea of red outages everywhere. A veteran cybersecurity researcher monitoring North Korean internet traffic observes a massive, mysterious wave of attacks taking entire networks down. He's baffled, having no idea who was carrying them out. P4X grins. It's working, and nobody has a clue that it's him. With each passing hour, the cyber onslaught continues. P4X's scripts relentlessly bombard the vulnerable servers until they crash, then move on to the next target. North Korea's few connections to the outside internet are overloaded, its routers paralyzed. What he's doing is essentially a denial of service, DOS attack, but highly focused, exploiting the regime's own weak points. By the time he finally stops for the night, practically every website in North Korea is down. An entire nation's online presence has been felled by a lone hacker at his keyboard. Before heading to bed, P4X takes a moment to absorb what he's accomplished. It's a strange feeling of triumph mixed with disbelief. He has proven that even a fortress of a regime can bleed in cyberspace. North Korea's internet is supposed to be a tightly controlled iron wall, yet he punched through it with relative ease. The first night of his personal cyber war comes to a close, but he knows this is just the opening salvo. Every site is offline, the regime is in the dark, but now comes the real danger. What happens when the world notices and starts asking who did it? The next morning, news of North Korea's internet outage quietly spreads among analysts and intelligence communities. It's not every day an entire country goes offline. Speculation runs rampant. Did U.S. Cyber Command or another state-backed hacker group take direct action? The timing is suspicious. North Korea had conducted a flurry of missile tests just days before. Some whisper that this must be a punitive cyber strike by a world power, a secret message telling Pyongyang to back off its saber rattling. North Korea's government predictably is silent. There's no public admission that anything is wrong. Inside the country, almost no ordinary citizens even realize the internet is down. They don't have access to the global internet in the first place. Fewer than 1% of North Koreans can ever go online beyond their domestic internet. The outages mainly affect the regime's external propaganda websites and email servers, which cater to international audiences. So on the streets of Pyongyang, life continues as usual. The blackout is an embarrassment for the leadership, not a nationwide crisis. But abroad, among the small circle of North Korea watchers, the outage is big news. For several days in a row, nearly all of North Korea's handful of websites are unreachable. Tech forums and Twitter light up with chatter. Is North Korea under cyber attack? When some sites briefly come back online, they soon crash again. It's as if someone is toying with the regime's connection to the outside world, flipping the switch off and on, Yet, no government claims responsibility. No one steps forward. This mystery only deepens the intrigue. Was it a new form of covert pressure by the US or South Korea? A retaliatory strike by hackers from an enemy state? The lack of answers creates an almost cinematic whodunit. Little does anyone suspect that the person holding North Korea's internet hostage is not a nation's cyber army at all, but a lone hacker at home. P4X watches this global guessing game quietly from behind his keyboard. He sees articles speculating on state-sponsored ops and laughs to himself. The world has no idea that this is a personal vendetta playing out in real time. For P4X, that confusion is part of the satisfaction. He doesn't want fame or credit. Not yet, anyway. Staying in the shadows keeps him safe. And as long as the regime doesn't know who's hitting them, they can't hit back. Still, the longer the mystery goes on, 
the more questions bubble up. How long can one man keep this up? What if North Korea finds a way to strike back digitally, or even physically? The world might be in the dark, but P4X knows he's stirring a pot that could boil over. He's winning for now. But is there a price for humiliating a nuclear-armed regime? By taking down North Korea's internet, P4X has made its point, at least for now. Kim Jong-un's regime has been publicly embarrassed, shown to be so weak online that a solo hacker can unplug it at will. For P4X, this is vindication. He set out to annoy North Korea and show them there are consequences for messing with Western hackers, and he succeeded. I definitely wanted to affect the government as much as possible and the people as little as possible, he says, his conscience clear. In his eyes, knocking out a few propaganda websites is like tearing down a dictator's billboards, a symbolic victory. Flushed with success, P4X decides he won't stop at just temporary outages. The more he thinks about it, the more he realizes that his one-man operation could become something bigger. North Korea's hackers will undoubtedly continue targeting Western individuals if they remain unchecked. So P4X raises the stakes. He plans to go beyond just denial of service attacks. Next on his list, actually breaching North Korean systems, digging up secrets, and exposing sensitive information to the world. If simply shutting off their internet got the regime's attention, imagine the impact of stealing their data. But P4X knows even he has limits alone, so he quietly sets up a covert website on the dark web, calling it the Funk Project, short for FU North Korea. It's a rallying call for other activists to join his cause. This is a project to keep North Korea honest. The site declares he's effectively recruiting a team aiming to multiply his firepower. One hacker took the country offline, a handful could potentially dig deeper and hold the regime to account. It's the start of a vigilante cyber army in the making. Not everyone in the cybersecurity community applauds these rogue efforts. Some fellow researchers who were also targeted by Pyongyang worry that P4X's vigilante justice might interfere with classified operations. What if US or allied intelligence agencies have infiltrated those same North Korean servers? P4X's noisy takedowns could trip up quiet espionage missions. Others point out he's almost certainly violating the law. In the eyes of the US government, hacking is hacking. Even if the target is a hostile foreign power, P4X is keenly aware of this. He knows the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act doesn't have a vigilante exception. By all rights, he's risking prison. And there's the specter of North Korean retaliation. They might try to identify and retaliate against whoever's responsible. So, is P4X scared? Surprisingly, no. He's motivated by a mix of anger and principle. North Korea's regime, he reasons, commits outrageous cyber attacks and human rights abuses, operating with impunity. He's decided someone has to push back. My conscience is clear, he says confidently. To him, exposing Kim's weakness and sending a message is worth the risk. In fact, his message isn't just for North Korea. It's also for his own government. By going rogue, he hopes to shame US authorities into recognizing the threat and protecting individuals like him in the future. If no one else will defend against these attacks, P4X will, and he'll make sure everyone knows it can be done. As for how far he'll go when asked what the end game is, P4X chuckles, regime change. No, I'm just kidding. He says he insists he's not trying to topple governments just to prove a point, and he'll keep hammering North Korea's networks until that point is unmistakably made. So far, no law enforcement has knocked on his door, and North Korea hasn't figured out who he is. The first shots of this one-man cyber war have been fired, and P4X stands unpunished, unidentified, and unbowed. His fight continues in the shadows, leaving a repressive regime looking over its shoulder, and the rest of the world wondering just who struck the hermit kingdom online, and if they'll strike again. North Korea doesn't know who's hitting them. Law enforcement hasn't come knocking. But how long can one hacker stay invisible in a war this dangerous? One man in pajamas brought an entire regime to its knees. But what happens when thousands of criminals don't just take down websites? They sell your identity like a product. To see how stolen lives became a global business, watch our next story, The Dark Web 